Hello, subscribers, and welcome new subscribers. We have some new subscribers as well. Welcome to uh, the Chemistry Channel. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. I run an online Facebook store and page, Chemistry. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm very excited about this new project I just finished. I just finished my uh, book, Christ Consciousness. i leave some links here uh, where you can go get the book. Uh, this is the best work I've ever done. I'm so proud of this work. I'm proud of the quality and I'm proud of the information that I have brought uh, to the masses. Uh, that divine inspiration, I just let it flow through me and let the message uh, flow through and just give it to others. So it was... Uh, such um i'm so grateful to be able to bring this message and the universe chose me to channel this message so uh i love this book it's called uh christ consciousness you are christ uh this is you can get this one on amazon it's 12 bucks uh and i'm going to go over this book in a minute uh, and this is the one you can get at Lulu. They pretty much the same, just the uh, the front. Okay, and I have it at ebook too. I think the ebook is twelve dollars. But let's, uh, you know, if you're ready to understand your Bible, okay, if you if you're ready to, uh, to grow spiritually and take your uh, uh, your spiritual growth to higher levels, this is the book for you. Uh, you're at the right place. You're looking at the right video. Uh, I'm proud of this book. I wrote this amazing book titled Christ Consciousness. You are Christ and you can get it at Amazon, like I told you. And the ebook is available as well. I wanted to write some things down because I didn't want to ramble on. I wanted to give you a review of the book and just let you know a little bit about the book. Uh, and then you can go... Uh, Go get the book yourself, okay? Uh, but enough about that. I'm, I'm excited to talk about the book and what's in the book. If I had this book introduced to me when I first uh, was introduced to Christianity, I would understand so much about the religion. And I probably would have grown more, you know, spiritually. I would have learned so much about myself, okay? If I would have understood where the book, uh, uh, more about the book, and where it originated from, then it would have helped me understand so many uh, other uh, ancient teachings and knowledge, you know, that's in the book that, uh, this, 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 you know, it's been presented to us in a wrong way, but uh, this book, Christ Consciousness, helps you kind of dismantle that and helps you uh, um, grow. It helps you grow and see the real meaning behind the scripture. And you're able to apply it to your everyday life and grow. So uh, that's what I love about this book, Christ Consciousness. Uh, it kind of explains what what the book, uh, the Bible, is going on with it, and what it's trying to explain, and what we need to look at uh, in order to find the deeper meaning meaning that's going to help us in our everyday life. Uh, that's what I love about this book. But let me begin to read general descriptions. Uh, in the book and then I'll discuss a few insights uh, to this in the book but I'm just going to read I got a couple of pages here highlighted pages in here that I want to read for you about the book uh, in the book and then I'm going to discuss uh, a few things uh, give it just a sh little short lecture on the book uh, the intentions of this book are to educate people on the fact that religion has drifted far away from its original base, that it has no no longer recognizes the very first and fundamental concepts in the beginning. In the Christian religion, Jesus is introduced as a real person. The most forgotten vital information is that religions venerate the sun gods at its core. It is obvious with a proper research of history that religious sects from various parts of the world acknowledge the sun as a deity. Throughout the reading of this book, you will soon come to understand the sun god was a universal concept in the ancient world. 
If we truly want to understand the story of Jesus, first we must examine the history of the sun god in the ancient world. Although sun god is seen as a historical myth, it was a valuable, a valuable intellectual tool which truth and wisdom could be concealed from unworthy and ex and un and expressed for the worthy. A myth of allegory was made as a way of subtly conveying the truth but veiled under stories of myths. Stories or myths. Ancients through the myth, myth would enhance spiritual truth as drama reinforces more situations. This assumption was not fully thought out. Now we have masses of people who are not aware of the biblical stories have a deeper meaning. Many don't understand the stories are only veils to a hidden meaning to explain nature and forces in the universe. The myth was harmless in that era. It was an outward story or myth understood to be fiction. The hidden meaning was understood to be valuable. It was the most ingenious design to explain the deepest of spiritual truths. It's going to page 16 and 17. 16, page 16, Julio's, uh, the title of this chapter is called Helios uh, Biblios. The word Holy Bible is derived from the Greek word Helios Biblios. Helios means sun, and Biblios origins are the ancient Egyptian word papyrus, meaning paper. The Holy Bible means sun book and represents the knowledge of the children of the sun, documented by the originated inhabitants of Egypt. And by the way, the original inhabitants of, of Egypt were the Sumerians. These were another uh, uh, black civilization uh, that... Uh, and, and we went on it went on to the Babylonian the Chaldeans they all documented the movement of stars and the Sun the celestial bodies okay the Bible Jesus the biblical Jesus is is Sun in the sky John 3 19 Psalms 84 11 the Lord God is a Sun there are many other scriptures that indicate that the Sun is God the twelve apostles are constellations. The virgin birth is the sun having its start in the constellation of Virgo, Latin for virgin. The name Mary is symbolic to the names Aset and Mary and Maya. Isis was the virgin mother of the astrological sun god Huru or Horus of ancient Egypt. In Buddhist mythology, Maya was the name of the virgin mother of Siddhartha 2,500 years ago. There are many astrological mothers. In fact, there are over 10 crucified saviors before the creation of Jesus. Virgo is the only female constellation, the celestial virgin. Okay, so let me go on to 17. Uh, there are, are, in fact, other sun god figures. Yeah, but let me go on. I don't want to skip this. The church demonstrates celestial mythology of Egyptian prior to Christian era. That means that the Egyptians had this idea, a concept of sun god or Christ before Christians uh, developed their religion or Jews developed their religions because the Christian got their religion uh, from the Jews. The Jews kind of helped them write their Bible and they come up with this biblical Jesus, okay? Uh, so Christianity is really based out the New Testament, and Judaism, a Jewish people, uh, take their doctrine from the Old Testament, okay? So you should understand that as well. Uh, these stories are masked by carnalization of human attributes and the created story, history, by giving Jesus an actual human death. The cosmology or celestial mythos has been hidden from the masses for many centuries to keep them in the state of servitude. The myth of the sun god is the very heart of religious beliefs. The Sumerians are said to be the very first culture that worshiped the sun. The light of the sun is deific flash of intellect. 
So the light of the sun represents the flash of intellect. Okay, we're getting back into consciousness here. And the sun represents uh, consciousness. It is, you cannot destroy it. It's indestructible. It's incomprehensible. So the sun represents divine intellect working through all things. Okay. Uh, and the very core of our conscious being is a spark of infinite indestructible energy of solar light. So we are beings of solar light. The sun, uh, the, the soul is, is nothing... But I'm sorry, I looked off. Uh, the sun is nothing but a part of our soul. Our spirit is made of this same divine intellect. You are divine consciousness. You are not your body. Your mind and your soul, uh, your psychology is the study of the soul. So your mind is your soul. Okay, this is why consciousness is so important. And elevating to higher states of consciousness is so important. Okay, uh, the body is nearly 80% water in the duty of the fiery spark to enlighten the whole dark realm of mortal life. This force of fire must uplift the lower man and transmute his nature into a spiritual glow of love and intelligence. We must turn the water of the lower nature into wine of the spiritual force in which we shall rise out of the tomb of physical corpus and ascend with angels. The angels looked upon the stars as living things capable of influencing the destinies of individuals, nations, and races. The early Jewish patriarchs believed that the celestial bodies participated in the affairs of men and, and men is evident to any student of biblical literature. And I give scriptures that you can go to in here and see where um, Jewish Kabbalah, uh, Markaba, was using the angles of these stars and channeling that energy, using that energy to map consciousness. Okay, uh, I talk about that, I think, at the beginning of this book. I talk a little bit about Markaba and Jewish mysticism. Okay, because mysticism is talking about really astrology in the deeper uh, uh, the universe and nature and how we're all connected with it. Okay, so uh, I talk about that at the beginning of this book. Uh, there are there are other sun gods. Okay, the in the Old Testament, I don't want to skip anything. In the Old Testament, when Moses comes down the Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments. He is very upset to see his people worshiping a golden calf. But that's not true. In fact, he shattered the stone and instructed the people to kill each other in order to purify themselves. Many biblical scholar, scholars would attribute this anger to the fact that the Israelites were worshiping a false idol or something to that effect. The reality is that the golden bull is a representation, is Taurus the bull. And Moses represents the new age of Aries, the ram. Okay? So the bull, they're coming out of the age of, of Taurus and into the age of Aries. And that is the sun god that Moses represents during that astrological age. So that's why that's being told there. But if you don't know this, uh, you just think this is a story. You know, but the story, these stories have deeper meaning that uh, are supposed to imprint upon our consciousness if we were ever exposed to this knowledge. But this knowledge is being kept from us. And that's why we are not, we, we're, stay, we're on these uh, three lower levels of consciousness and we have not evolved. Uh, I love this book because this book uh, kind of, it shows you, it's kind of anything, now, let me be very frank. It shows you uh, how this is being done and how you can, uh, raise your level of consciousness, okay? Uh, the Gospels, Jesus refers to different ages, which are in fact divisions that constitute, constitute the procession of the equinoxes, okay? Moses was created to usher in the age of Aries, so was Jesus to serve as an avatar of the age of Pisces. Jesus serves as an avatar of the age of Pisces, 
which is the abundant of fish imagery used throughout the gospel tale. The zodiac, zodiacal connection has been so suppressed. The Bible is nothing more than an astro theological literary fold hybrid, just like nearly all religious myths before it. Okay, this, you know, I love this book. Uh, I love it because I'm able to express my thoughts and, and really convey them. Uh, you know, love this book. Uh, there are other sun god figures in the Old Testament under a wide variety of names. There are Samson's, who names mean solar, David, and Solomon, and Saul equals soul or soul, the sun for Latin, Abraham, Moses, Gideon, Jephthah, and the alike. They actions identify them as solar representatives. Okay, so... Let me go on to, uh, that was 17. Let me go on to 22. It's so much juicy stuff in this book. You know, that's what I like about it. I put so much, even though it's a, it's a small book, it's not over uh, uh, 55 pages, uh, I put a lot of juicy stuff in this book. Uh, it, it's certainly going to help you evolve. 22. Okay, many of the cultures in the world sacrifice God men have their birthday on December 25th. People believe that the sun god had died for three days and was born again December 25th. After the, after the 25th, the sun moves one degree north, foreshadowing longer days. The three days following December 21st remain the darkest days of the year. Where Jesus the Son deity dies and remains unseen for three days. Since the beginning of human existence, civilizations have established religious beliefs that involve the significance of the Son. Okay? So, and then I go on in this chapter to uh, show you all the cultures. I list all the cultures who deified the Son in this chapter. So this is, this is a very good chapter too. Uh, what chapter is this, matter of fact? Let me be more. Oh, it's the solar gods. We're still in the chapter of the solar gods. I love this chapter because it, it gives you, uh, it lists all the solar, solar gods in uh, many of uh, different cultures. Okay, I'm going on to page 48. I don't know what chapter this is. I'm a 48. Oh, this is actually in the conclusion. So I'm going here. I put some. Juicy stuff in the con conclusion, apparently. Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, the progression of consciousness was traced by observance of stars or constellations. Each constellation is represented by astrological age. Each astrological age signifies a new form of consciousness intelligence urged in by the sun going into a crossing, a zodiac sign, which is a constellation. Many of the characters in the Bible can be identified as zodiacs that has mentioned that 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 has been mentioned at the beginning of this book. Okay, so you got to get the book because I break it all down, and I'm going to page thirty. Here, the age of Gemini is, oh, page 30, I'm trying to see, okay, here we go. The astrological age is a time period which astro, astrologic theology, theology and, and astrologists claim parallel major changes in the development of our inhabitants relating to culture, society, and politics. There are 12 astrological ages co corresponding with the 12 zodiac. Uh, I go on to tell you how uh, the Leo age is identified with the primitive man who was the hunter. Uh, you can see that in Genesis 2, uh, 4 through 7. And then you go into the age of cancer, which is the age of gatherer, uh, the age of uh, the feminine goddess. Uh, but I believe, like I said, I have this backwards. I believe that that the uh, Cancer and Age, or the Age of Virgo, I think they got that backwards. I believe the Age of Virgo was first, since they have these sun gods being 
born from this uh, uh, Virgo uh, mother in constellation because everything above is so below. And so this had had to happen in actual life for them to see this in astrology like this. So I believe that uh, I believe that the woman, this goddess, uh, uh, this feminine god was first. Because when you go, the further you go back in history, you see that uh, it was understood that God was a woman. And then they set up their Parthenon as this God coming from this woman. So it has to be some type of biological truth to that. Uh, I, I wrote a little bit about that in my other book, Matriarch to Patriarch. Okay? But uh, it's telling you that uh, these major changes, this was being documented. And uh, the Bible is an astrological book that documents all these behavior and changes that's going on in the world, okay, or among that culture. The age of cancer, uh, Genesis 2, through 25, is the line between Leo and cancer, and a shift from male dominance to female dominance is when the first spiritual systems are being created. So I talk about that in... in you know, in that that first paragraph when I'm talking about the astrological age. This is obviously a description of, uh, oh, oh, did I miss something? Okay. It says, woman is so-called tempted by the serpent to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge. This is obviously a description of Eve experiencing an altered state of consciousness by coming in direct contact with ethnogens. It is ruled by the moon, properly known as the age of the great mother. It is associated with the birthing, nurturing, and protection. The verse is layered with hidden meaning. Woman became the gatherer of the vegetation, and the moon goddess water did is responsible for the tides of oceans and seas. Uh, you see that in uh, Yemiya, Yemaya, uh, into those uh, African traditional religions. You can see a little a bit of that uh, being applied here too. If you understand the deeper meaning of the verses. Okay. During this age. God is focused on feminine concerns. Though God appears to be using cursing. Uh, to be cursing Eve in the verses. The reader should not dismiss the role of Eve. Is being addressed as well. Notice that both Adam and Eve. Are both in the garden. And the etymology, etymology to Adam. Is earth or dirt. Or Eve is moon. See the symbolism. Okay, so I, I talk a little bit about that in the book. Uh, like I said, this is a very good book. I'm very proud of it. Very good quality. Uh, I'm proud of the quality. Uh, I was, you know, I you know I am so happy that I let the divine uh, use me uh, and to channel this work and bring it to the masses. So if you're trying to evolve and you want to... Uh, uh, learn a little bit more about your Bible or you trying to elevate to higher forms of consciousness or uh, if you're just trying to understand uh, astrology and how it applies to you and your consciousness this is a really good book okay uh, and I thank you so much for following me uh, I thank you so much for watching our video uh, and I thank you so much for being here today and listening to me uh, give you a review on the book and you have a wonderful weekend a wonderful day light and love and may the ancestors be with you